You know what? Maybe I will just use that entire B pillar. Because the trim is not blown out here. Yeah, I can still keep that trim. I just gotta step back a little bit. And we'll keep that trim. I'm gonna show you how to use um, the desaturation for individual color channels too. Just in case you're in a shoot location like this car is in right now where you have a ton of tungsten light, so everything is as orange as orange can be. That's sometimes real hard to deal with. Especially if you're doing light painting and you have no ability to really use a gel on your light. Like you would have with uh, studio lights or flashes. There, I'm going to come in and fix this too. That needs a bit more white. How are we looking? Pretty good. Car's got a, a 3D look to it almost. Just the way that you can blend all the lighting together, it kind of almost makes it look unnatural and if you keep clicking the layer on and off you can see slight adjustments that you'll need to perform uh, for example if you're looking at the A pillar with this on you don't see the A pillar there's no light on it but if you disable that and look at this layer you can see there's an A pillar right here so that's as simple as zooming in and erasing from that layer so that you can see the A pillar. Now the shortcuts I'm using when I'm doing this is um, if you do have a computer that has any kind of power to it as far as processing and RAM, Photoshop allows you a little bit of uh, creature comforts here. For example, if you hold the letter Z down and hold the left mouse button down and move in and out, it allows you to pretty much control your zoom. And if you hold spacebar, that just allows you to pan around. So that way you're not selecting every individual tool. As again, in case you didn't know, a cool thing too with Photoshop CS5 is you can flick it around like you know, you're on an iPhone. I wonder if they call that iPhotoshop. The zoom feature and the hand feature. So Now we have the ability to see our A pillar, so it doesn't look like a floating windshield. Now, this is where I was going to end the video, but I have decided that I'm just going to carry on editing just to show you guys where I'm going to take this. So I'm using layer masking here. Uh, this is basically a non-destructive way to edit attributes of your file. Basically it creates a new layer and it's a mask and you're able to add or subtract pieces of that mask with certain attributes to what you're doing. For right now I'm going with my hue and saturation. The toolbar looks like this. So basically this is adjusting the entire photograph. I don't want that. I want to get rid of the tungsten here. I'm going to show you the easy way of doing it. 
if you control click on the box there and hit delete oh that's not working for me there I'm gonna control a delete there we go so now that layer mask is pretty much empty and you can either use your paintbrush or you can use your polygonal lasso tool to select what you want to edit as far as the saturation goes another tip here is don't forget to reset your foreground background colors if you're using both black it'll do a funky thing and it won't let you add to your layer mask so just make sure you always reset it back to black and white when you're doing this so that you don't uh, forget and think that your Photoshop is messed up and end up rebooting the software 10 hundred times like I did I'm just going to quickly select my background and a large brush and I'm going to paint all over the area here on this layer mask if you notice now it's white the white basically means that's what you're editing so you can go saturation right there or if you want you can change the hue of it you get some pretty funky stuff with it so I'm just going to take the saturation down a little bit so that it's not as orange at the top there and now I'll take my eraser tool again this process does take a little bit of time and there are easier ways of doing it I am not telling you that this is the only way so if you do feel that you have a better way of doing it that's quicker for you by all means post it up on the YouTube comments and we'll take a look at it and see how it works going through the car here and taking out this layer mask I applied I'm going to have to apply it in other places too because if you look on the edges of the car here some of that tungsten lighting has spilled onto the car because it was approximately a 15 second exposure and even though there was only really two tungsten lamp posts probably 150 feet away from where the actual vehicle was it's still spills onto it pretty good I'm gonna lower the flow here and just try and blend that in a little bit better because the brake lights are making things red and then we have our amber lights from the car so we don't totally want to get rid of it we just don't want the entire background to be orange right there that's a little bit cleaner now if we zoom in with our brush again we can go to these problematic areas where tungsten light has spilled and we can use that same saturation layer and remove that light so that it's not there now you notice it's no more orange Oh, I don't want to zoom in that far. I'm just going to do that on these highlights right here. A little bit of orange is okay, but I don't want that much. And on the A pillar, that needs to be gone. There, that looks a little bit better. And now I'm going to throw up levels here and play around with those see what I can make out of them I have to zoom in here And get this piece of sensor dust out of here put 
push S for the stamp tool. And that should be okay for that. Probably have to go down to that angle here for this one. And there we go. No more sensor dust problem. I think I'm going to mm -hmm. I have to erase some of this, it's not looking right the more I look at it. I have to take some of this out of here, the bottom of the car right here, right by the uh, rocker panel. I'm going to go 2% here and just do a slow... This trim down here needs to be a bit darker too, so I noticed when I brightened it up it kind of gave me a whole bunch of weird looking pixels. Kind of like 256 color that we used to have on our old school computers. I don't know how many of you used to play with Photoshop 1, but I used to play with that when I was about 10 years old. Man, was that ever a bunch of fun just a giant paint program back then that's too much flow 2% again there we go it's not totally dark but there is more definition I'm going to have to do that with the front too, right here. Just erase a little bit of it. Now let's, uh, let's see what this looks like now. There we go. This won't be the final picture. There's more adjusting to do, fine tuning, but there you go in about 28 minutes you have a somewhat long lesson on how to go through and stack photos and erase and blend them together uh, this can apply for many things besides cars too um, it's somewhat of a process used when people are doing HDR and that's if you're doing HDR without using something like Photomatix Pro where it does all the stacking for you. Anyways, hope this helps you out.